Good morning. morning. I'm so glad to see all of you here this morning. To all visitors, we are glad you are worshiping with us today and hope that you will find a connection with God at WBPC. Please take a moment to sign the fellowship pad which is located at the end of each pew. I would like to welcome Mr. Emmanuel McGuide as our guest preacher today. Mr. McGuide is a practicing attorney holding several positions within North Carolina and is also a licensed Baptist minister. We welcome you. I have a few announcements to make. Um, Tuesday, August 22, is the pre-season right night live sponsored by our noble, you, did you hear I use the word noble? The noble Stephen Ministers at 6 p.m. at the Fellowship Hall. More information is in the purple update. It will be a night for you to remember. The Jasper Vest for service is still August 27 at 5 p.m. in the sanctuary. This will be our at the table service. Please plan to attend. Also August 27, at our morning worship, is when the student's backpack will be blessed by Pastor Frank. All school age kids are invited to bring their backpacks. More on this is in the um, weekly update. Don't forget the donation for the school supplies. Temple? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Dear friends, if you look in your bulletin this morning, you will see that there's a small snippet of music printed for the psalm. That's the response and the verses between each of the responses, I will sing as a cantor for those. Uh, once in a while, we look for a setting of the psalm in our book, and either uh, there is no setting for the week's psalm in the Glory to God hymnal, or sometimes there is a setting, but it's something that we don't know, and it's fairly lengthy and complicated. This very short response that's printed in your bulletin today is from the old blue hymnal, which you may remember had a few uh, psalms in this format, where there's a response and verses between. There's no need to worry about that, even though it's unfamiliar. The choir is going to lead us through that, and I think your ear will probably guide you as to when to sing and when to just relax and listen. <laughs> Thank you. Let us all stand to worship God. God has forgiven us and drawn us close, reconciling us through Jesus Christ. Who has established upon us the holiness of the blessed Holy Spirit. With glad and grateful hearts, praise the Lord. Let us come and worship the Lord with gladness.
In humility and faith, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray. Holy God, we We have sought justice for ourselves, but neglected justice for others. We have insisted on our lives, but have not lived rightly in our relationships. We have desired mercy for our sins, but we have not offered mercy to those who have sinned against us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, free us from the prison of our disobedience. Help us love Friends, the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Let us receive the gift of forgiveness and share that gift with others. Thanks be to God. As the Lord has forgiven us, let us also forgive one another, sharing the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. Okay. Let's go to the prayer of illumination. She's here? <laughs> what did she say? There's, there's children here. There are children. Oh, you, you, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. You used to sit right here. That's why, <laughs> that's why I missed you. <laughs> question for you. Hey. Do you know, have you ever heard the word unexpected? It kind of means when something's unexpected that something is a surprise. Like if you wanted to go out and play in the sunshine but it started raining all of a sudden, that would be unexpected. I wanted to share this word unexpected because it's in today's scripture. Jesus is something unexpected. The story begins with a woman asking Jesus to heal her daughter. Instead of Jesus saying yes or no, Jesus ignores her, which is really unexpected for Jesus. Even though Jesus ignores her, the lady begs and prays that Jesus will help them and heal her daughter. And because of her great faith and her continuing to pray and ask, Jesus does heal her daughter. This is unexpected that Jesus would not immediately heal her daughter, but he does in the end. What I appreciate about this story is that the woman doesn't give up. It doesn't matter 
What unexpected things happened, she just kept asking for help. And eventually that help is offered to her. As unexpected as this story is, I think this story is told because it helps us think about what happens when we ask God for help and something unexpected might happen. Even though it might not be exactly what we expected, God always helps us in the end and does what's best for us. All right, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your help, even when it is not what we expected. We trust that you are with us and watching over us. Amen. And the congregation says? And we say? Prayer for illumination. Oh God, as the scriptures are read and the gospel proclaimed, open our ears to hear your word. Open our eyes to see your truth and open our hearts to receive your grace. Amen. <laughs> scripture lesson is from Matthew 15, reading from verse 21 to 28. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Kenyanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. His disciples came and urged him saying, send her away for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him saying, Lord help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw them to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord. Yes, even dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed from that moment. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. 
I'm going to um, read in your hearing briefly again um, from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the uh, 15th chapter, uh, verses 25 through 28. And it, and it says, Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Um, from that reading, I just want to talk for a couple of moments on the theme, great faith, a crisis conversation with Christ. Great faith. I'll turn to you and say, great faith. A crisis conversation with Christ. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us and speak to our hearts. We pray on this morning as we gather that we decrease and that you increase and that you speak to our hearts on today for your glory, for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, again, praise the Lord, everyone. So glad to be at Western Boulevard Presbyterian Church. And um, thank you for the invitation to preach the gospel. Uh, you know, my day job, I practice law, but I'm a preacher. I'm not a pastor, but I am a preacher. We preachers, we like to preach. So it's always uh, a, a blessing, a blessing to get an opportunity to break the bread of life. Um, and um, wanted to, to recognize your pastor in his absent pa pastor, Frank Mansell, and um, your worship leader, Sister Suzanne Smith. Where is she? She's been coordinating with me. Um, oh, she's in the back somewhere. Okay. And um, I also worked this week with Emily Lorbatcher. I think your administrative assistant. And um, all of you all. Um, and the liturgist, where's, where's Sister Millie? Where'd she go? So yeah, yeah, so just to thank God for all of you all, and um, and I I, I brought I brought my posse with me. I brought my people. <laughs> so I got yeah, my, my wife is here. Sister Dorothy raised your hand, and my son Michael just showed up all the way from Atlanta, but he's in town. But he's good to see Michael and uh, uh, his friend Sister Olivia. Yep, yep, and my other main man, Morehouse brother. Good to see you too as well. So good good to see you all. My, my father's children. Um, so let's get, get right to the word. Um, a crisis conversation with Christ. Great faith. Have you ever been in a crisis and nobody could help you but the Lord? You know, we can just turn on the news every day and we see people in crisis, uh, the, the wildfires in Maui and the loss of life and the property damage. During the COVID uh, pandemic, did you lose a loved one? Or did you have COVID yourself and was concerned about your own health? I can't, this sermon is about folks who've ever had, uh, had to have to exercise great faith because you've been in a crisis situation. We turn on the news all the time, we see the gun violence is just ridiculous, um, the mass shootings, we see what our young people are going through. Um, our African American youth, our, our white youth, Hispanic youth, opioid crisis, drug addiction, alcohol, so many ways where they seek to self-medicate and deal with the issues that they have to face and that we face as well. I came by to say, have you ever been in a crisis? Have you ever had to have a crisis conversation with Christ? Perhaps your crisis has been receiving a phone call and you've lost a spouse or a sibling or a parent. Or, or maybe you've gotten a bad report or you were there when, you, when, when someone got severely ill and you had to call 911 to get some help for your loved one. Or have you ever been in a crisis where the doctor gave you some bad news, a chronic illness? Well, if you haven't been in a crisis, I just came by to tell you, just live long enough. <laughs> You're gonna have some crisis situations. Oh, I know you wanna make it all seem like everything is just so nice and I live on a hill and a white picket fence and 2.5 kids and everything's just leave it to beaver. But I came, this sermon is not for that kind of situation. This sermon today is for some folks who have some crisis in their life. I came by to say that when you have a crisis, you get out of your comfort zone. 
You know, in Presbyterian Church, I grew up in the Presbyterian Church, and, um, and I've been a Baptist minister and an apostolic Pentecostal minister, and now I'm back with the Presbyterians. <laughs> and, um, you know, we call ourselves the Frozen Chosen. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> and I was preaching a sermon of, uh, I don't know, a little bit about a year and a half ago, and um, it was called Being Born Again, and I was at a Presbyterian church, and I said, uh, you know, ain't nobody gonna really get happy up in here. <laughs> and I preached this sermon and had an altar call, and the brother came down to the altar. <laughs> I said, Lord, what am I gonna do now? And we both had a good time in the Lord. <laughs> Shouted and jumped it for joy and, and praised the Lord as we were led to do it. Got on our knees and worshiped God. Speaking in tongues, all of that stuff. <laughs> we just had a good time in the Lord. But I came out and that brother had something where he needed from the Lord. I see another bro brother who's visiting us today, Greg Switzgable. Raise your hand, Greg, my good uh, fellow attorney, co-counsel, <laughs> and, and his friend. Wanted to recognize you, forgot to recognize you. But um, yeah, so, so, but in that situation, it was a crisis situation. And um, that brother needed the Lord. And we just had church. I came by, this sermon is for somebody who, we ain't, I didn't come to, to, to just be all pretty and make, make things seem like it's always it's so perfect. I came by to say, have you ever been in a crisis situation where you had to have a crisis conversation with Christ? If you've been in that situation, this sermon is for you. I came by to say, have you ever been in a situation where you had to exercise your faith and tell God what you needed and you got your blessing? Today's sermon is about a Gentile woman. She was not even a part of the Jewish faith, and she had no right to talk with Jesus. She was not Jewish. She probably even worshipped polytheistic gods, and, and, um, and, and, she, and Jews had no contact with the Gentiles. They had no contact with the, with the Canaanites, a, a Phoenician woman. And, and, and she said, the devil's in my house. My daughter is possessed with a demon, and she needs help. But she came to Jesus because she knew she had the answer and she got her blessing. She knew that she had a right to the promises of God. If you don't hear anything that I, I, I say today, take that home with you. You have a right and a duty to believe in the promises of God. And because she got her blessing and she knew she had a right to the promises of God, she knew, she, she, she got her blessing. She knew that God loved the Gentiles too. She knew that if she crossed that boundary, Jesus would cross it with her. So she kept on pressing. I came by to say that the, this Canaanite woman, this Gentile woman, went to Jesus for the healing of her demon-possessed daughter. And she shows us that as believers in Christ, we have a right to the promises of God. We have a right to ask God for our healing and deliverance. It may not always work out like we want it, but we have a right and a duty to ask God for our healing and not just for ourselves. We have a right to ask God for healing for someone else. You have a right to ask God for healing for your children. You have a right to ask for healing if, if your daughter's in, 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 the, in the maternity ward and she has problems coming through. You have a right to pray for her. If you see somebody struggling and, and they're in your spiritual custody, you have a right to ask God. You have a right to go to God on behalf of someone else. And that's what this mother did. She went to God on behalf of her daughter. Someone who was in her spiritual custody. I came by to say on this morning, my father's children, that Christ is drawn to us when we are genuine. When we have a heart, a genuine heartfelt faith. And sometimes God does not even move until it gets dire. God doesn't move until it gets really, really, the water gets really, really deep. Because he wants you to know. You know what he wants us to know? He said, he wants you to know that nobody else could do it but Jesus. When God pulls you out of some tight, tight spots and you went, you tried to fix it all you could and then a, a way was made because you were leaning on the Lord. You can say, ain't nobody did it but the Lord. I came by to say you have a right to kick the devil out of your house. You don't have to let the devil stay there. The devil ain't paying no rent. Tell him to get out of your house. <laughs> And, but what keeps us from exercising our right to the promises of God? What keeps us from being delivered from the power of darkness and evil forces? What keeps us from putting the devil out of our house in Jesus' name? Is it fear? Is it anxiety, the opposite of faith? 
Is it looking at the outward appearance and not at the heart like Jesus charged the Pharisees with doing? Jesus is drawn to our heartfelt prayer. Prayer, and this woman had prayer and faith that changed Jesus' mind. The scripture says that the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. As we think about this gospel, the gospel of Matthew, it's the first gospel. It's considered the most Jewish gospel. Even in this passage today, Jesus tells that woman, I was, I was come to the lost sheep of Israel. It, the Gospel of Matthew focuses on the identity of Christ, the promised Messiah who would, have seen, who would assume the throne of King David forever and forever. They're always trying to figure out, who is this Jesus? Is he really the Christ, the Messiah? Who is this Jesus? So the persons in this gospel, they struggle with that. Who is Jesus? Is he the, the Christ prophesied in the Old Testament? And at the beginning of this chapter 15, the Pharisees and scribes, they criticized Jesus. They said, man, your disciples, those are some filthy guys. They don't even wash their hands before they eat the bread. And they were, they were, they were into not uh, hygiene, but they were criticizing the disciples because it was a ritual purity, uh, according to the Pharisees, to wash your hands before you ate. And Jesus went off on them. He said, you guys are just superficial. He said, you all, you honor me with your mouth and you honor me with your words. But he says, your heart is far from me. And Jesus told them, what you eat does not defile you, but what comes out of the mouth defiles you. He says, you, you Pharisees are like the blind leading the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, where are they going to fall into? A hole, a ditch, right. That's what he said, you all going to fall into a ditch. And Jesus says that, but he says that your unclean heart leads to your evil thoughts and to murder and adultery and fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemy. He said, your heart, y'all need a, you, you keep keeping your rules, but you need a heart transformation. That's what he tells the Pharisees in the first part of, fi of chapter 15. And then he leaves the, the, the uh, Jewish territory and he goes into Tyre and Sidon. So Jesus goes into Gentile territory. Already you see Jesus is pushing forth. Even though he came to the lost sheep of Israel, you see he's pushing forth, taking the world, the word further to just not to Jewish people, but to the world. God so loved the world. So he's put, he goes into the Gentile territory and he sees this Canaanite woman, and she, but she sees him because she needs a crisis conversation. She needs some help. She says, she comes out of the coast and cries unto Jesus, have mercy on me, O Lord. She's worshiping him. She calls him Lord. Thou son of David, which was a messianic term. Have mercy on me, O Lord. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Jesus says, no answer. In this uncharacteristic of our loving Lord, he gives this woman who's a Gentile. He doesn't say anything to her. We really, we really don't see our Lord acting like that in the scriptures. He says, he says he doesn't answer her prayer request. And the disciples said, send her away. She's bothering us. And she wasn't even talking to the disciples. She was talking to Jesus. <laughs> but she worships the Lord and she kneels to him. She says, Lord, I just need your help. She said, Lord, I am in a crisis. My daughter is dying. She's possessed with, the, with these evil spirit, this evil spirit. And she, she's been suffering for a long time. And Lord, can't nobody do it but you. And then the Lord said, is it meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs? So does he, that's another harsh word. Jesus says the meat, the bread is just for the children of Israel. But she turns back. She doesn't stop. As, as, as my sister who did the children's talk, she said she kept on being persistent. She said, it's not, it is, she said, truth, Lord, we may not be entitled to the bread, but just give me some crumbs. The dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And when she kept pressing Jesus, she touched his heart. She touched his heart. She changed Jesus' mind. He said, oh, what great faith. Woman, oh, great is thy faith. Your daughter is healed. And her daughter was made that whole from that very hour. Oh, I know the, the, the spirit hadn't fell on the church yet, but that woman, she had a little toast of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> a little touch of the spirit to make her just press forward and say, Lord, I'll just take the crumbs. This, this Gentile woman showed us that we have a right and a duty 
to ask God for our deliverance. We have a right and a duty to rest on the promises of God. We have a right and a duty to, to stand in the gap and pull in the outsider, those who seem far from the Lord, who need help. We have a right and a duty to, to minister to those and pray for those in our spiritual custody. We have a right and a duty saying, we ain't gonna let this foolishness continue to go on in my house. As for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. We have a right and a duty to rest in the very promises of God that he is a healer and a deliverer. Okay, I'm almost through. Three points and I'm gonna sit down. <laughs> this Canaanite woman teaches us that it's all right to break the protocol to get your blessing. It's all, and secondly, we have, a, we have a right and a duty to pray to God even if God does not answer us. And lastly, we have a right and a duty to pray even if we're an outsider, and we have a right and a duty to pray for those who are outside, who seem to be outside the love of God. This Canaanite woman had faith in Christ because she had heard about Jesus. Oh my goodness, can I ask you out again? This woman came to Christ because she had heard about Jesus. Can I ask you, have you heard about Jesus? Have y'all heard about that, that woman who, who had an issue of blood? And she said, if I can just touch, can I walk around Jack? She said, if I can just touch, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, hallelujah, I can be made whole. I came by to ask you, have you heard about Jesus? Jesus, the only other Gentile he, he, he really blessed like this woman was the centurion servant. Have you heard about him? Did, have you heard about Jesus? The centurion said, Lord, my servant is sick and I don't know if he can make it. Jesus said, I'll come heal him. He said, no, I'm a centurion. I'm a Roman soldier. Don't come into my house, we, we oppress the Jewish people. But if you just say the word, if you just speak the word, he said his word and it healed them. If you just speak the word, Jesus, I'll be all right. If you just speak the word, I can make it through the night. And, and, and he spoke the word. He said, he spoke the word, he said, your servant is healed from this very hour. And he said, I've never seen so great faith. He said, this centurion had more faith than everybody in Israel. Have you, so I came by to say, have you heard about Jesus? And it's all right to break the protocol to call on the name of the Lord. And, and, I, and so when we talk about hearing about Jesus, it's not even based on what we do or, or have done. Sometimes we don't want to serve God. He said, we say, well, Lord, I've done so much evil. The Lord can't ever use me. <laughs> that was, you know, I'm a lawyer, but I'm really a frustrated preacher. And um, the reason why, why, one reason why I haven't even pursued ministry uh, to the extent that the Lord has always called me to, because I say, Lord, how can you use me? All the stuff I've done, done in my life. But we preach ourselves. We preach who? We preach Christ. So I came by to say that you have a right to break the protocol. You don't have to let your past keep you from seeking the Lord you, because you're a centurion, because you are a Canaanite woman. You can break out, you can cross the boundary. Because if you step to God, he'll step right back to you. So we have a right to break protocol. We have a right to pray even if God does not answer. Sometimes we feel like, God, you didn't answer my prayer. But this woman, she, she was persistent. She kept right on praying. You have a right to spend the time in the presence of God. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Some of the, the people in the Bible, some, some miraculous things happened to them, but they suffered greatly too, but they kept right on praying, even in the darkness, in, in, the, in, the, in the dark hour. Paul said, I have fought, what? The good fight. Now, I think he was in prison when he said that. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Some say that all the, all the apostles in the scripture, most of them were martyred. I know it's not documented in the scriptures, but it's in history, they say most of them were martyrs. They kept right on praying. They kept right on praying. So you have a right to break protocol. You have a right to keep praying even when God does not answer. What do you do when God doesn't answer? Do you keep on praying? I came by to tell you, church, to keep on praying. My last point is this. Pray if, if you're, even if you're an outsider. If you weren't invited to the party, keep on praying. This woman was a Canaanite. The Jews had no dealings with Gentiles. Jesus objected to her request at first. But she kept right on praying. What's, what, what's keeping us from, 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 from ministering to the outsider? 
Why is it now, even in the, in the church, 21st century, we're still mostly segregated based on race? We're se segregated based on political party and religion and denomination and economic class. When the scripture says we're supposed to be brothers and sisters in Christ, why aren't we ministering to each other, breaking down the, the middle wall of partition? Why aren't we ministering to the homeless and those opening up the church to those who need help? I came by to say Jesus told us to minister to the outsider. If not, we just become a country club and a, so, a social club. We want everybody to be just like us. And that goes for all of us. Goes for all of us because the church is for not everybody. The church is for everybody. <laughs> It's for everybody. Everybody has a right to seek Christ. God so loved the what? The world. Worldwide. We, we can't keep anybody. And she says, Lord, I'll even take the scraps. I remember when I was growing up in Prince George's County, Maryland. Now, this, this wasn't politically correct. We had a, a mixed Siberian Husky. But we used to feed, we fed, fed the dog some, some dry dog food. I'm an old man now. I don't know I don't look it, but I'm 57 years old. But, but I, was, I was a teenager. We fed the dog dry dog food, but we also gave him some scraps. <laughs> Isn't that how you do it in the country? Maryland wasn't the country, but I saw how they did it in Roland, North Carolina, and Mississippi, where my parents were from, too. You give the dog what? Scraps, right. She said, I'll take the scraps. This woman said, I'll just take the scraps. And, and your scraps is enough to bless me. You know, this was the beginning or indication of the Great Commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. This was an this was a, this was a, a indication of the Great Commission when Christ dealt with this Gentile woman. Also at Pentecost, when, when the Spirit fell, and he said, you shall receive power when the Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses worldwide. Because he, he, Jesus, this woman crossed the boundary. This woman from another nation and Jesus crossed the boundary. So as I end this service, in this sermon, I came by to say God will bless whoever exercises faith, even desperate faith in a crisis. I came by to say that there is enough bread at the table. I came by to say let us break bread together, brother musician over there, on our knees, on our knees. Choir, I said, I came by to say let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. There's enough bread at the table. Let us break bread together. And my last point is this, even me, even me. The song goes like this, Lord, I hear showers of blessings that thou art scattering full and free. Showers the thirsty souls refreshing showers the thirsty souls refreshing let some drops now fall on me it's, it's the showers are coming down but this hymn writer says i just need some drops let some drops fall on me even me lord even me let some drops fall on me can i get an amen i said some, even me even me let some drops fall on me can i break the protocol this morning <laughs> can i cross the boundary this morning even me even me let some drops fall on me. You have a right and a duty to ask God for the promises of God for your life and to minister and pray for others. And there's enough bread at the table. You just need a little drop, a little touch, a little dose of the Holy Ghost. We just need some drops to fall on us. Like this woman said, I, I, I'll take the crumbs because a crumb from the master is enough for me. Oh, can we, get, can we give him a hand praise? <laughs> give the Lord a hand praise. Let some drops fall on me. I just need a crumb. I just, you just need a crumb, little young man. You need a crumb, just a crumb, just a crumb from the master. And as we close this sermon, we break in protocol. If you have a need from the Lord, we're here to pray for you. The altar is open. If you just want to say, Lord, I'm like this woman. I have, I have a need. I have a need. I have a need. The, the altar is open. And y'all been standing down, stand, sitting down for a while, so why don't you stand up and just give them a praise as we close this service, whoever can stand. Give them some praise and say, I have a right to the promises of God. And I have a right to seek God because I have some crisis. I need, a, I have a, I need to have a crisis conversation. Anybody need to have a crisis conversation with Christ? Well, just give them some praise, give them some glory. We breaking the protocol this morning. <laughs> praise and glory, a crisis conversation with Christ. A crisis conversation, because he's, he's here to deliver. He's here to heal. Oh, hallelujah. 
Y'all, y'all stand with me. We believe in the promises of God, the promises of God. Bless you, my father's children. God bless you and keep you. Stand on the promises of God. Bless you, bless you. Now we're going to go into the hymn. In Christ, there is no east or west. Now let's have the affirmation of faith. We, but together, we believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purposes. We are convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things come, no powers, no height, no depth, or anything else. No nation who is able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now we have the sharing of joys and concerns. for the message and I just want to return my thanks and praise to God there have been times I've been driven to my knees and the Lord has seen me through and I'm sure you all have I just praise God. Amen. Thank you. Okay, let's, let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we just thank you for your goodness and your kindness, Lord. And thank you for the, for the brother who expressed how, how you are a deliverer and a healer and how you send your word and it heals us, Lord. So we thank you that we have a right to rest on the promises of God. We have a right for healing and deliverance and not let the evil forces to overcome us. But we have, we have a savior in Jesus Christ the Lord where the promises of God are yea and amen. So we ask for your blessings on all, on all the spoken prayer requests, unspoken prayer requests, every, every soul under the sound of, of, of my voice, Lord, that, we all, that you bless us and use us for your glory. And now as you taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And Lord, we pray that this offering be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. For Christ's sake, amen. Now remain standing and turn to the hymn 649, Amazing Grace. standing and receive this charge and benediction. As children of God, we have a right and a duty to exercise our faith and call out to God in crisis situations for ourselves and others, including the outsider, even when we are the outsider. God will answer our prayer. God in Christ will heal us. And the promise is to us and to our children and to others. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. For Christ's sake, amen.